Hey everyone, Rick here from The Coffee Machinist or at Coffee Machinist on Instagram if you follow me there. So what I want to do today is walk you through a teardown and service of an E61 group head. Uh, I've got a donor machine here, this is a Rocket Giotto Evolution. Uh, I've got some tools, I've got some parts. We may need more as we go, but uh, this is a good start. So yeah, hope you find this useful. So this E61 group head, very common on higher end domestic machines, lever operated. Uh, it's called E61 because it was designed by Ernesto Valente and patented in 1961. He was uh, working for Faema, uh, so that's why we call it E61. Um, the lever group is the most common variant. There is also a solenoid operated group which doesn't have this lever assembly here and doesn't have this uh, full drain assembly. Uh, it just has a solenoid sitting down here, but this is the most common one we find on domestic machines. So. Uh, the anatomy is that this lever operates a cam and several different pistons inside the group. There's one in the top and two in the bottom. Uh, this is a pre-infusion chamber which saturates as the pressure from the pump uh, increases inside the machine when you're brewing. Uh, this is the exhaust portion of the valve uh, and in here is a, what we call a mushroom valve with generally two inlets for the heat exchanger and a restrictor or gicleur in the very top. So it's important to understand before we really get into it how this lever operates and what it does inside the group. So when you finish your shot, the lever is in the downward position. That means that the pressure from the puck can escape through the group and down into the drip tray through the exhaust valve. In the upward position, this valve in the very bottom is closed. The top one can operate under spring pressure, so it can be charged by the positive pressure of the pump uh, to saturate that pre-infusion chamber, but it is closed to low pressure. So in the top of the group, the valve that is allowing water in from the heat exchanger and mushroom in the top of the group is open. So now uh, positive pressure inside the heat exchanger can flow into the group and start to saturate the coffee. Also in this position we've actuated our micro switch which, which means the pump is running. There is a position midway where the mechanical valve will be open but the micro switch isn't yet open which will allow if the machine was under mains pressure, for instance mains water, you would get a lower pressure pre-infusion without the actual full pressure of the pump. Now in the upward position, water can flow through the heat exchanger pressurised by the pump uh, through the shower screen and onto the coffee bed. So when we end the shot, we are closing the top port and opening the bottom port to allow that pressure to vent through into the drip tray. All right, we got tools, we got tunes, we got parts. I'm just gonna quickly run you through these tools so you can uh, see what I'm using. I've got two shifters, one large one, one medium. I've got three open-ended spanners, metric. I've got 26, I've got 24, and I've got 22. The 22 has a ratchet end. They're the most commonly used open-enders on these groups. Uh, needle nose pliers, little drill bits, um, vice grips, small, and a seven mil open-ended spanner. They'll become clear later on. Uh, two uh, flathead screwdrivers, one short, one long. Uh, naked group handle comes in handy. Uh, short little impact driver comes in handy. Uh, a rotary wire brush for the impact driver, you'll see where that goes. A uh, little wire brush and uh, very important, a pick for removing uh, O-rings and seals. Uh, then we've got some food safe grease. Uh, I've got my parts, we'll talk through them later. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, uh, a double espresso. Now, I realise the logical impossibility if you're servicing your own machine, but uh, you'll just have to do your best to get your hands on one of these because, yeah, you can't really service one without it. All right, let's get into it. I've got a container for catching some spills and I've got some hot water there just for cleaning up. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my 22 and my biggest shifter and I'm going to separate the nut that's under the restrictor or over the restrictor, sorry, and the biggest part of the mushroom. So that's now loose. And then bracing the machine, I'm going to give the big nut a tap to get it moving. Now these all have Teflon seals, so they shouldn't be ridiculously tight, but because there's a mushroom inside as well, they can be hard to move. Some of the mushrooms are now ceramic in rocket machines and they can be problematic. So uh, yeah, that's a whole different topic though. Um, the older ones are brass uh, chrome plated so they never pose a problem to remove them. But yeah, some of the latest rocket ones, if they are ceramic, can be difficult. So just take your time, being careful of your movements so as not to do any damage to the metalwork. And you'll get to the point when you feel the O-ring is moving a bit freer and at that point you can turn it by hand. So 
there's the mushroom. That's actually looking really clean. Some of them are completely blocked up with scale, but that's looking good. Okay, next up, flat screwdriver. I'm going into the nut that secures the lever handle. And I'm undoing that and I'm pulling that whole assembly off to the right. There is a little spring washer under there, so just make sure you retain that when you put it back together. Next thing I can do, take my 26 and my 24 open-ended spanners. Some of these nuts are 22, but on the rocket I know they're 24. On this uh, age of the group, particularly. So, I'm just gonna separate these two. So I'm holding the inner one and I'm trying to move the outer one. There we go. Some of these can be very tight, but now they are both turning freely. So now that they're loosened, I'm just going to go ahead and back out the bigger fitting that's innermost to the group. Again, just being cautious that the chrome of the group is right there, so careful when you're making your movements with the spanners. Again, you'll feel this start to loosen when you get to a certain point. That means the thread has completely disengaged from the group. And you can start to turn it by hand. So you'll notice that this uh, shaft isn't actually turning, I'm just turning the whole assembly and the shaft is moving inside. So now pull that away, set that aside, we'll come back to it later. I'm just going to keep going and remove everything uh, in terms of the main parts of the group. So again, big shifter, bracing the machine, and wind the uh, exhaust assembly back. This should be quite loose, you should be able to uh, do this one by hand. Okay, now here we have the topmost valve assembly of the lower half of the group. One of those in here, there's also another one in here, so we've got to get to that next. I'm going to set all these aside as they come out. I'm going to get my needle nose pliers and I'm going to pull a spring and that top valve. There goes the water, out from the top of the group. So you should have the spring and the top valve as an assembly. Separate the spring, put it aside, and we're going to keep all these aside as well. So next up, I want to separate the lower half of this drain assembly from the top half. So that's that nut there. Now to do this, I need to put it on a flat surface, get my biggest shifter, these can be quite tight, so you need to brace it properly. This uh, bottom fitting is 26, and crack that open. So this is under spring tension, so just keep a hand on it as you disassemble it, otherwise it'll fly across the room. Okay, there's that bottom valve. So all three of the little valve assemblies I've now got out. This group is looking really clean. There's not too much damage. Uh, these seals are in fairly good condition. So the assembly of these is that there's a little brass pin. Underneath that is the sealing face itself. So you can think of this like a tap. The cam that's attached to the lever is pushing these as the cam operates up and down. So the cam itself is rotating on that brass surface of the pin to open the valve. So where you get a lot of wear is where you've got that metal on metal contact of the brass against the brass. In some groups, this cam itself is uh, bronze, slightly different metal, which I actually prefer as the uh, wear on those components is less when you've got two dissimilar metals, brass and bronze. Okay, so next up, 
we'll disassemble uh, this component here. This is the uh, cam and the lever shaft assembly. There's two seals inside here which we need to get to. So we already loosened them when they were on the group. So even though it's tight, I should be able to turn this by hand. Again, keep in mind this is under spring tension. So just go gently. Remove the spring and remove the inner brass guide. So next, we've got the lever shaft uh, inside its, its uh, carrier there. So you should be able to just pull this out. If this is really tight, you might need a soft face hammer, like a rubber mallet, to just knock that through. Uh, that's usually something I'd have here as well, I remember. So there you go. There's your cam and lever shaft. Now, one of the issues here is that we get some uneven wear on these cams as the groups get older. So what I like to do is I like to resurface that uh, to make sure that surface is all nice and smooth. If they get really bad, this unit will have to be replaced because uh, they get to a point where the actual cam profile is no longer what it should be. Now, inside here, we've got two seals, so they're going to need to come out. That's the first step. Pick poking it through and I'm just pushing those seals out through the big gap. There's one. There is two. I'm going to get that inner one. Usually a bit harder. Okay, that's two. So next I'm going to have a look at these and actually get those apart to change the inner seal. So this is where my vice grips come in handy. Vice grips are going to grip that face there, which is not the largest, but it's the intermediate face. All these have got the same diameter, so you should just need one setting on your vice grips for those. Uh, this is also where that 7mm open-ended spanner comes in really handy because it's perfect for opening these up. So in here there's a metal on metal thread. It's um, about 3 millimeters. It's um, either a coarse or a fine uh, metric thread depending on which variant of the group you've got. So you should be able to crack those open. If you can't and you end up breaking it, uh, you're going to have to replace this whole assembly with a brand new one. But if you can, and these uh, tops of these pins here are in fairly good condition, we can just reuse them. Uh, there is also a little brass or stainless steel washer in there, so make sure you don't lose that when you're disassembling it. There it goes, as I've just done there. Nice one, Bond. Okay, so at that point, you can dig out that seal. Okay, set that aside. If there's any moisture under there, you want to get rid of it uh, because it will interfere with the new seal uh, as it goes. So just make sure that's nice and dry when you pop the new seal in there. So here's my new seal. I've got three the same. You'll notice it's a different colour. There's a couple of different kind of sealing materials that you can get. They're all roughly equivalent. Uh, this, I think, is a silicon. There is also a viton that you might find is a red or a green colour. And then there's the regular ones which are EPDM rubber. Now, they're all fine. There's no real better or, or worse uh, sealing material, in my opinion, for these. Uh, I find anything that's hard enough will do just fine. If they're too soft, they'll wear prematurely. The silicon ones are probably the softest. Um, but these ones are a bit harder, so they're fine. So in we go. Just push that down and make sure it's sitting flat. Now I lost my washer, so I'm going to replace it with a new one. I'm not going to bother trying to find that now. It's gone. New washer. The surface of the pin looks pretty good. So no uh, resurfacing needed there. If it was really bad, I'd add another washer and then I'd take some material off the top. Uh, either in a lathe, which I've got behind me, or you could do it with sandpaper or a file or something like that, whatever you've got available. What you've got to make sure, though, is that that height remains consistent. So the height of the pin uh, should be preset against a new one. 
or whatever the old one was so that you don't change the way the group operates. So that height, let's just find out what it is because it's worth knowing. It is 12.7 millimetres. Okay, so that one's done, we can set that aside. Moving on, we're just gonna do all three of these. We'll start with the uh, lower one next. So this has got a different profile. You'll notice this is triangular, whereas the other ones are square. You can still use your seven mil. I find this works just fine. So these are all behaving themselves, but if the group was uh, perhaps a little different, uh, a little older, these might be really tough to disassemble and you might well end up shearing that little pin off. So this time, I'm not gonna lose that washer. Staying put. Dig out the seal. All right. Again, make sure it's dry. Still see some moisture in there, so just make sure it's spotless. That's good. New seal in. Now let's just uh, check the dimensions of these, just so that we're all on the same page. So this is, if it's, if it's designed to fit an E61 group, and it's in that um, pin assembly, it will be correct. But let's just have a look. We've got 12.9, so let's say nominal 13 mil diameter. And I reckon that's four millimetres, yeah, four millimetres high. So 13 by four with a hole in the centre. Um, there are a bunch of different suppliers for these, so I can't uh, give you any specific part numbers or um, yeah, anything like that. But um, any E61 diagram, if you're looking at these assemblies, it's gonna be the right seal. You might end up with a different material, but it won't matter. goes that washer. Now important to make the triangular pin with the shorter bottom valve. So it's triangular to improve the amount of uh, flow rate that can go through. So because this is the exhaust valve, uh, you want to have the least interference with the, uh, the pressure that's trying to escape. So that's why they use that triangular one there. Okay, that's good. Now, this is the, uh, the one that sits there. So this is the kind of pre-infusion uppermost of the exhaust assembly. Now this one is quite badly worn. So I am gonna resurface that. So what I'll need to do is find an extra washer and put that uh, in to be refinished so that that's nice and smooth. And I'll do the same on this cam. So let's start with changing out the seal itself. Do that the same way as we did the others. that aside, rescue the washer. Sometimes the washer can be really hard to see, but it is there. It's either gonna be attached to the pin that you took off or just sitting on top of the seal. Just very light pressure when you tighten these, it really doesn't need to be tight at all. Because it's such a small thread and it's brass, it's fairly fragile. So just hand tight is absolutely fine. Okay, so next up, we're gonna resurface that top surface there of the pin, and we're gonna clean up that cam. So what I wanna do is I wanna get that surface nice and smooth. It's got, got a little bit of a dip in it from where that's been in contact with the pin like that. So I just want to make that flat again.
So what I'm looking for is a flat surface. So that's pretty good. You'll notice any of the black spots are where the previous surface was and the shiny surface is what we've just made. So that's looking better. I've got my wire wheel. I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a quick brush as well just to get any uh, high spots off. And give the shaft a bit of a clean up as well. Just to remove a bit of the dirt. You don't want to be too aggressive with that because you can actually remove some of the brass material itself. So it's just really to clean it up. Very light pressure. You can do the, um, if you've got scale build up on these assemblies, you can just wire brush them. Might as well clean them up. But again, these are in pretty good condition, so we don't need to worry too much. So if you are lucky enough to have a lathe or access to a lathe, this is absolutely the best tool for this job. But basically all we need to do is put a perfect flat surface on that pin. So there we go, resurfaced. Now the important thing here is to check that you haven't made any significant difference to the height. If there's more than half a millimetre uh, of height that you've taken off in that refinishing process, then you're gonna have to add a washer under here to space that pin up so that the uh, action of the lever is the same. But that's good. So there is our refurbished tap assemblies and resurfaced lever cam. So they're ready to go back in the group. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the cavity inside the group itself where the mushroom sits. Now this one's already very clean but if your group is uh, got some scale deposits in it they're likely going to be hanging around the inside of this bore and on the surface of the mushroom which we'll get to in a minute. So I've got my rotary tool, rotary wire brush on my impact driver here. Now you've got to be very careful when you're doing this but it can be done. I'm just going to put that in there and give that a run around the inside of the group. So yeah, just super careful when you do that, obviously because that group uh, would not appreciate being in contact with that wire brush. So, hot water, just in, just to wash out anything you've cleaned off the wall there. And that looks sparkling. So next up, let's get some new seals and uh, put these assemblies back together. So two of the lever shaft seals. Now let's have a look at those, see what they measure. They are, I'm gonna say 15.7, 16 outside diameter. And they are four mil thick. So let's say 16 by four and internally eight. So two of those, just make sure they're seated in flat. And then we can put this in the brass guide, the spring and the nut. Downward pressure. And get that started. So you do need to put a quite a bit of pressure on that to get it assembled. You don't have to tighten this all the way, but doing it a bit by hand will save you time later on. Next up, I'm going to put some of my food grade grease on this shaft here. And give it a bit of a twist as you push it through. Yeah. a bit of grease on the actual cam. Just a little bit, doesn't have to be a lot. 
Okay, next up, let's do the drain assembly. Now, I've given all these components a bit of a cursory clean. You could be really thorough at this point. It's not strictly necessary because it's in the uh, exhaust part of the group. So, yeah, you don't have to be too scrupulous about um, coffee at this point. But, yeah, it is nice to give things a bit of a basic clean. So, again, we've got working against spring pressure. This is the uh, heaviest spring in the bottom of the group here. We've got to push down and twist that until the thread engages. You can do it up till finger tight, but obviously you're not going to be able to do it up much tighter than that at this stage. Now, just get that brass guide into that uh, spring. And then that whole guide sits around that um, pin in the lower part of the valve. Okay, so that's good. That's how it goes into the group like so. Okay, next up, let's have a look at this mushroom. Uh, so this surface here, we can wire brush and clean up. This o-ring here, we might decide to change. We've got a replacement there. There can be a couple of different sizes of this o-ring, so we've got to make sure that the one we've got is going to be the right fitting for the, um, the group mushroom. So there is commonly two sizes that I've found in these groups. Now, remember before we loosened this top nut, so that's to our advantage now because we can open that up. Now inside there, you'll find a mesh filter, stainless steel. And if we look into the mushroom, we'll see the restrictor in there. Now that's a very small hole. It's about 0.6 or 0.65 millimetres in diameter, maybe 0.7 depending on the group. Uh, so any reason that the flow rate is not very good through the group, you're probably looking at a blocked restrictor. Um, so what I like to do is soak these two, two components in descaler uh, externally from the machine. So I'll go off and do that now. So there's our mushroom having a soak. That's just a citric acid descaler. We'll have a look at that in about 10, 15 minutes and we'll go on with something else. So next up, we're gonna try and drop that group seal and shower screen down. Now with the E61 shower screens, the way you get the group seal and the shower down is by using the lip on the outer rim of the shower screen as leverage. So for that, I've got a nice big flat bladed screwdriver with a nice big handle and I'm gonna just seat it on the edge of that lip and use the bayonet ring of the group as leverage. So just go gently from one side, then move to the other side and do the same. Now that should drop down easily. If it doesn't, probably means the seal is hard and hasn't been removed for ages, in which case you might have your work cut out for you. But go gently and just apply pressure from one side and then the other and it should drop down fairly easily. So that shower screen, yeah, look, I'm giving that a 6 out of 10. That's pretty good. I've seen far worse today. So because I'm being thorough, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try and get the dispersion disc, uh, often also called a mushroom, out of the centre of this group and give it a clean up. Now, uh, on this group, I probably don't have to do this because I can see that it's been pretty well looked after, but I'm going to demonstrate it just so that you guys can see. So again, I've got my impact driver and I've got the biggest flat attachment I've got for that. I'm just going to make sure it's seated in the slot and drive that one out. So there we go. So that we can certainly give it a bit of a clean, but yeah, it's not too bad. It's certainly not uh, stopping the flow of water to the group or yeah, impeding the, the operation of it in any way. But yeah, let's give it a clean. Okay, so I've given the uh, dispersion disc a bit of a clean up with the wire wheel. The important thing to note with this part is there's a couple of fine uh, holes that are cross-drilled through it. So with your uh, fine drill bit, just make sure there's no impediment to the water flow through those holes. There's two that go across like that, and then there's one centrally on the bottom like that. Uh, and then as long as these jets on the side are also clean, you're good to go. So we can just screw that back into the group. Now this doesn't need to be tight. There's no sealing going on on that thread. So just a little bit of pressure with a flat screwdriver, good to go. Now, I'm gonna to elect to replace that shower screen with a brand new one. Uh, I've also got one of the Cafe Lutz uh, silicon grip seals, which I really love. This is the eight millimeter size. The red's the eight, the blue is the 8.5. Now, if I look at the one that came out of that, that's just a generic rubber one. I can see that the 8mm is going to be the same stack height. 
Now that's critical because when you put your porta filter in, a thicker seal will make it lock in at a different point. So we want to match the one that came out of there. So I'm going to say eight is the correct call. 8.5 would probably work, but what you'd find is the handle would be locking in uh, prematurely. It would be locking in, you know, with almost no movement into the group. So, just going to put a light pressure on it with my fingers, just to get it started in that uh, sealing face. So that feels like it's going in just slightly. It's where the naked group handle comes in. So we can use this to get some leverage. Just give it a wiggle to push it up. And then when you can feel that the bayonets have engaged, you can push that across to seat the seal home. Perfect. Doesn't matter that you don't have a basket in, in fact it helps because that gives you extra room to get the bayonet tabs engaged. So there's the mushroom, squeaky clean after its descale. And just give that a bit of a scrub down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that o-ring off and change that because that looks like it's seen better days. Now, if I compare mine to the original one, see that's a pretty close match. So you just want to have a look at the cross section because there are a few different sizes with these ones. So as long as that is sitting proud, then that's going to work. This is actually an important seal. If, the, if you don't have a good seal here, then you're interfering with the flow of water through the group as the water won't have to pass through the restrictor on its way to the shower screen. It's got a shortcut. So you do want to make sure that that seal is good. So, restrictor's looking nice and clean. And put our mesh filter back in. Now, these Teflon seals hardly ever give trouble. If they're not over tightened, they'll be absolutely perfect for the life of the machine. There's no need to change them. But if someone has over tightened it or they've been uh, squished, then yeah, you'll need to change them. But ordinarily, no, no maintenance required on those. Okay, so we can reassemble the group now, starting with the top tap seal assembly. Just gonna drop that in and try and get it into the hole in the group. Boom. Next goes the spring. To make sure that's seated concentrically around the um, tap assembly. So now you'll see that pins drop through to the centre cavity in the group where the cam can operate it. So that needs to be through that hole. Now at this point we can take our mushroom, just put a little bit of grease on that o-ring. So you should feel when you push down you're just on the edge of the spring tension but certainly not enough to make it difficult to thread that part in. If any of this is super hard to thread in, just make sure that you haven't cross-threaded the fitting in the group. So tighten these progressively. Big one first. Again, it doesn't have to be super tight because Teflon's very forgiving as a sealing material. You don't have to use a stupid amount of pressure. Now, there is a specific order in which this needs to be done. So at this point, we can still put our cam in, but if we had put the drain assembly onto the group at this point, we just wouldn't be able to get the cam in because it needs to have an opening to get through as they're both under spring pressure. So at this point, uh, yeah, I can insert this lever cam assembly. Now it's got to go in at about six or seven o'clock. That's that large part of the cam when you're looking at it from this way. So I also leave a bit of a gap, let's say three or four millimeters uh, with the lever protruding from the actual body of the valve there. Uh, that's so that you can actually get the cam seated against the pin and start to turn it. So this can be quite tight. So probably what we should do there is just screw in the outer nut and once that's tight we can use that to tighten up the whole assembly. So that is going to be 24. Just obviously be mindful that there is shiny chrome everywhere. You 
you can lean on that one quite a bit because it'll again it'll it'll tighten up that joint there as well as you tighten the outer one. So now for the drain assembly. Just guide that in so that the pin goes through the center of the uh, bore in the group. And yeah, again, just careful that these aren't cross-threaded as you go to tighten them up. Now 26 for that bottom one. Now you don't need to tighten the top one in this uh, situation because tightening the bottom one will do the work of tightening the top one as well. So just keep a hand on a machine to brace it and pull that around. So with the handle itself, again, just making sure that we haven't lost that star washer in there. You can see it. Now, again, this has a number of different points where it can lock in. So just make sure we've got the right one because uh, I should be able to pull the group up in this position, but I can't, I've hit resistance. So I reckon we are there. So if that operates in 90 degrees, then we're good. Easiest to tighten it if that lever is in the go position. Okay, that's it. So just one little detail on this group. I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on the micro switch here. There's two common types of these. One is a roller and one is just a ordinary shaft like this. The rollers are really nice. They tend to be uh, lower maintenance. So these shafts should just get a bit of grease periodically. Um, they can be a bit nasty and squeaky otherwise. So there you have it folks. That is a complete service and reassembly of the E61 group. Uh, now a couple of points just with usage, uh, uh, particularly cleaning. Uh, those pins inside that you saw, where the brass on brass wear is happening, uh, back flushing with chemical back flush will just accelerate those metal surface deteriorating. So if you back flush the group heavily with a chemical cleaner, you'll find that uh, fairly quickly this lever starts becoming really nasty and squeaky. Uh, so that's telling you that you've pulled the lubrication off those brass surfaces. Uh, so my recommendation with E61, particularly the manual operator groups, the solenoid ones you can back flush uh, as often as you like, no adverse issues whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, with the lever ones, you just want to be a bit uh, scrupulous with the amount of back flush uh, cleaning that you put through it. Use it very sparingly. Uh, most back flushing I'd encourage you to do with water uh, very quickly after you've made the coffee. Uh, and that way you can both keep the group clean and also not uh, wear out those brass uh, components inside. If you do like to back flush it, that's fine. Just know that you'll be doing this job more often uh, and you'll be replacing those um, those pins. So you'll be replacing these far quicker if you're using a lot of uh, chemical back flushing. So uh, that's a job done on the U61 group. Now there's definitely a whole lot more work to be done on this machine for a thorough service, uh, but it made sense to start with a video of the U61 uh, service because that's something you guys might like to do at home. And uh, if you've got the tools and the parts, uh, hopefully that gives you the confidence to tackle it. Uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. Any further questions, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, yeah, cheers and happy coffee.